Just Outdoors is brought to you by the following community supporters. Jervelin Hardware Hank, Deer River. Jervelin Hardware offers a broad selection of paints and sporting goods and a complete line of plumbing and electrical supplies. Jervelin Hardware, 108 Main Avenue, Deer River. Meridian Medical Clinic. Located in Grand Rapids, Meridian Medical Clinic is dedicated to providing quality medical care for every stage of life. Meridian offers a variety of family practice services, including on-site laboratory and digital radiography. Meds One Emergency Medical Services. Meds One provides mobile advanced life support, critical care response, and comprehensive EMS support services, such as response planning, education, event standby, and consulting. Hi, my name is Tom Chapin and welcome to Just Outdoors. This is a program to bring you the bare facts about the woods, waters, and wildlife of Itasca County. And I think we have a great program today uh, because of our guest. We have a special guest today. His name is Jack Ryla. Welcome to the show, Jack. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for coming in. And you are uh, the land manager for the Ryla companies. That's Timber correct. Manager. That's, okay. good. That's correct. And uh, a lot of history here we're going to be talking about. And we're going to talk about uh, basically the white pine industry of, Min of Itasca County and all over. Uh, we're going to involve all the timber products that you're involved with. And I think, you know, the first thing I do with my guests on the show is have them tell a little about themselves. And, you know, why you're here, where you're from. How long you've been in Grand Rapids, Itasca County? Of course, you've been here all your life, but uh, tell the folks uh, a little about Jack Ryla. Thanks for having me, Tom. Yeah, yeah it's a pleasure to be on your show and to talk about some uh, and some of the things in my life that I that are uh, that I'm pretty passionate about. I grew up in uh, northern Itasca County. I was born in Affy, out on the uh, uh, oh, actually out in the woods on the Deer Creek, and. Uh, uh, lived there for a number of years until my mother got tough with my dad and said, "No more living in logging camps and out here on the, you know, in the uh, in the country. We got to get into Big Fork so the kids can go to school." And so, I grew up in Big Fork, went to school in Big Fork, graduated uh, from there, and went away for a few years, uh, okay. chased a good-looking woman to <laughs> California, married her out there, and and came back in 1962 to um, to uh, help out in the business temporarily. Uh, and uh, and never left. Okay, this was a business your dad and your uncles were running to. Correct. Okay. This is a, a business. The mill in Big Fork, where I grew up next to, then is uh, was put in there in 1902, and my uh, my grandfather came to northern Itasca County just at the after the turn of the century and uh, wow. was a, was a homesteader there and had been in the mines. Uh, copper mines in Upper Michigan until that time. He was a good woodsman, and so he grew. He raised his family there on the uh, on the Big Fork River. You've been there, where the oh, sure. Deer Creek runs into the Big Absolutely. Fork, just uh, east of Effie. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, the Coon Creek Rapids. 
I've ripped up a couple canoes on that, okay. those rapids <laughs> yeah. uh, over the yeah, over the uh, years. Probably many people have. But they uh, have. Yeah. Unfortunately, mine were a couple of birch bark canoes yeah. that Bill <laughs> Hafeman had built for me. Oh yeah, yeah. everybody knows Bill Hafeman. Oh, uh, what, yeah. what a wonderful artisan uh, he was. Anyway, our, our family business was logging and lumbering, and uh, you know, yeah. back in those days. You learn most of your things just by, from the seniors. Uh, sure. We certainly had to learn reading, writing, and arithmetic mm -hmm. in school. But uh, my father was a good woods. My grandfather was a good woodsman, and uh, my my father followed. My father and his six brothers. There were seven Ryla sons in that family, who all were ultimately in the logging and lumbering business, and uh, were part of uh, various of the ventures that that were uh, it, that uh, happened uh, uh, my father was the oldest of that that gang of, of oh. characters <laughs> okay. uh, Finnish kids uh, growing up there on the on the river but anyway then the mill in Big Fork is is uh, uh, where uh, I really get uh, acquainted with the uh, uh, the uh, the white pine industry. Okay, stole it up. And the uh, this uh, this is a picture of the mill as it was when we mo when we moved into town in 1941. It's on the on the bend of the Big Fork River, right on the upper side of the village of Big Fork, and it uh, yeah. already was a, a you know a major player in the white pine. What was left of the white pine industry. Uh, white pine, of course, is the is the tree that's so famous in terms of the Minnesota forest from way back uh, when Nicolay and some of the early uh, explorers came to Minnesota that's the forest they, they saw. Yeah and most of Itasca County people don't realize that work was basically white pine wasn't it? Well it was and yeah. the, uh, uh, although there are two major white pine forests mm -hmm. eastern white pine forests in okay. the United States you know, one in New England uh, uh, New York State and North and then the Lake States and uh, as that whole industry moved west, and uh, well, these are yep, these are parts. Of, uh, these are all the things that I've written in You're my, also in my book. Yeah, <laughs> and you wrote bringing, about your bringing uh, back the the white pine, product, and, yes. and maybe we can talk about sure. that a little bit here sure. in a minute. But anyway, I grew up around that industry, and mm -hmm. you know, learned uh, the uh, the lingo of the the lumbermen and. Uh, and actually had to work around the mill as a as a pretty young young kid. You know, you could do those things back in those days. Sure. You could, what a better you, way to learn all If you were 13, 14 years old and were sure. strong enough to lift oh, the board, you, there you, go. you went to work. Yeah. Uh, probably the uh, the uh, most fun for me though during those years is if I go back to this picture, I think you can see it, barely see it, but in the river behind, see there are logs in the river. Yeah, right in this area, right in here. It's okay. all full. I, I think we maybe have another shot here in a minute that we uh, show it that. But you had to be near water all the time because that was your transportation. Right, and that yeah. floated the logs into the mill. Sure, sure. This, the Big Fork River was one of the main log drive rivers of northern Minnesota. But uh, in this era, the log drives were already over. They kind of came to an end by the early 30s. And by the time I got on the scene and can yeah. remember things in the early 40s, you know, yeah. I'm an old man now, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but reaching back to 1940 is quite a while. But you grew up with that history, uh, talking to your, your, your yeah. parents and your grandparents. Right. And uh, white pine was certainly the, uh, the species of choice. It was the, mm. it, it's what made the sawmill industry. You know, if you, if you look at Minnesota's early history, it was fur first, okay. and then it was forests, and then it turned to agriculture and wheat and things like yeah. that. But even, you know, the, the Pillsbury family, as famous as that name is, if we think about it as you know, flour milling and, yeah. and wheat and, and uh, all that, they actually were started and came here as a lumbering uh, yeah. family from the east. But the horses drawing all these, uh, on, with the wagons, all these big logs you know, people remember seeing all up around town in some of the restaurants, those are all white pine, aren't they? Most right, yeah. yeah. Like you know, and the beauty of the white pine is it'll grow on so many different sites, and uh, yeah. and uh, it, the white pine trees live uh, live a long time. Anyway, the the mill in Big Fork is one of the uh, well, is the and we're still tying white pine in that mill yet today. So, okay. for way over a hundred years, white pine logs have been coming into 
into uh, that mill and has been, White Pine has always been the tree of our choice. Now your business, uh, Ryla Mills, they, they cut more than just White Pine and they use more products than White Pine, but you got a passion for White Pine yourself. And so well, what have you been doing with that passion? Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, I, I recognize some Quite a few years ago, that yeah. we had to do something about replacing the white pine. Uh, that was uh, certainly we were losing the white pine uh, uh, as a cover type. Was it over uh, taken by something? Or? Well, it was mass. It was massively harvested. Okay, so during the, the harvesting the, was during the nineteenth century. Maybe over harvested. Century. Then. Right, and up until okay. nineteen ten, and even after nineteen ten, two big mills still existed in Minnesota. Huge mills. Warehouser had a big mill at Virginia, okay. uh, and uh, cut uh, up to one million board feet in a twenty-four yeah. hour period of time. It was the largest sawmill in the world at that time. And the Bacchus had the big mill in International Falls. He put it in in about 1910, and that mill was there until 1932. But then there were a number of other mills, a little smaller, like our mill, and uh, Dahlberg had a mill at Kiwat, and Hedstrom still had the mill at Grand Murray. And White Pine has continued to be a major player in the lumber industry, such as it is in, in Minnesota. The big industry, of course, the warehousers and, and that gang, did, they went west and got into the big timber and in, in, into the western states. Okay, the offside question here, this for the folks, what is that what you normally use for? What's the main use for the white pine? Well, you know, we're, uh, we're sitting in a, in, a, in a beautiful room here uh, in yeah. your studio, and this is, this is a white pine uh, log siding here. On that, it could be paneling, but it's also used for cabinetry. It okay. uh, was even used for flooring, but millwork. And uh, today we make a lot of different white pine lumber products, but we also make a white pine veneer that's used okay. windows and doors and things like yeah, that. It's beautiful wood. Like it's hard. a it's a beautiful wood. It's easy to work with. Mm -hmm. It's it's soft. Mm -hmm. It's light, and. Um, uh, they're also highly, highly sought after for uh, log cabin logs. Well, anyway, some 25, 30 years ago, I realized that we, uh, our white pine forests were, were uh, diminishing. You know, we spent a lot of time in this state, our DNR and the U.S. Forest Service, in, in uh, reproducing, planting, and regenerating our state tree, the red pine. Okay. And, uh, Let's take a look at the difference between the red yeah, pine and the white I, pine I, and show I, the folks I, what, uh, uh, what we're looking in. at here. Yeah. That's pretty fresh right there. Well, that's real <laughs> fresh. I just broke it just off a uh, red pine tree out here uh, yeah. in the uh, in the, uh, the woods yeah. just before we came in. Uh, red pine is a two-needled two pine. So if somebody wanted to identify that right, and didn't know a lot about the, the conifer species in Minnesota, that's one, that's the way to tell the difference. It is. Yes. It has a longer needle and two and needles. And two needles a just, yeah, look at the cluster and you'll see just the two, the two needles. Um, uh, this and is this is a really yeah. The length of the needles can vary a lot on all right. Trees, although the red pine will always be a uh, longer. Uh, longer than the jack pine. The jack pine is also a two needle to, uh, okay. uh, pine, uh, but it has a shorter needle. Both red pine and jack pine are are uh, have a serotonous cone. In other words, the cone does not open on the tree. The cone has to fall to the ground, and it was f uh, a fire that regenerated, would open the cone and regenerate the, the red pine and the jack pine. Okay. The white pine is a five-needled pine. Uh, also a nice fresh cut that I uh, took this morning. A little shorter needle, and you notice how uh, uh, finer textured. Yeah, they're, they're a softer texture. Yes. A lot softer, and uh, needles are always a little bit shorter, seems like. A little bit. But they can get pretty they, long they too. Get, but anyway, but the cluster itself's got five, right. five needles. Right. Each cluster has has a five, and um, uh, the wood is almost an, a a, uh, a parallel to the look of the tree. It's a softer wood. It's a less pitchy wood, and this cone opens on the tree, and the seeds can the seeds oh. can float for so quite a ways. Difference. And so, okay. white pine doesn't need a uh, fire or uh, as much uh, soil disturbance. Well, fire, it doesn't, it doesn't take fire to open up the cone. The cone will open up by itself. It's an important factor in terms of the regeneration programs we have. Now, the value of the two trees as far as the wood goes, is white pine have more value 
This that, one does. Then a red, then a red pine. Yeah, it does. Or a Norway pine, they call that too. Yeah, that's okay. the, the local name for it. Yeah. But uh, the pinostrobus or the white pine has has a has a, a greater value because mostly because of its it's more pitch free. And is it, it more dense or anything? Or? No, no, actually, it's softer and softer. less dense. Uh, it, you wouldn't use white pine so often for con for, uh, for structural strength. Sure. Floyd joists or yeah, rafters or, or things or something like, like that. Or, yeah. But two by fours, yeah, it's okay. kind of in, in between. However, many early early buildings and sure. most of the 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 buildings of the pioneer days were built out of white pine. Well, there's so much of it. That's yeah. what they had. They, it they, was the abundant forest and. Uh, uh, you know, if you look at the state of Minnesota, you, certainly the the range where white pine grew is Itasca County is is in the northern part of that range, but we're well within the range. Maybe the heaviest concentrations were down in the uh, in the um, the Cloquet Valley, Carlton County, Carlton County, area? County yeah, Cloquet okay. Valley. At least that's what Agnes Larson says in her wonderful okay. history of the white pine industry in Minnesota. But you say white pine also goes down into the uh, middle central central part of the country oh, too. There, yeah, it does. So it's, it's just not a northern Minnesota. No, tree. Yeah. Uh, it certainly is. It it has its preferred soils and sites. Yeah, but it'll grow over a much broader. Uh, climate range and soil range and site range than most species. Okay. It's, um, yeah, there are some pretty good looking white pine forests way down into Olmsted and Good Hill County down into Iowa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, uh, I've seen good white pine in northern Indiana. So okay. wow. it's, so. it's actually, uh, as it migrated six, 7,000 years ago after the glacial age, it was, it, it endured on the Atlantic coast shelf during the glacial ages, but it migrated back and it came both sides of the Great Lakes. Uh, it, you can see uh, a paleontologist can tell that uh, it came along the south side of the Great Lakes, coming west to Minnesota, and along the northern side up into Ontario in here. Okay. And this is and this is where it stopped. In fact, Itasca State Park is really yeah, it's kind of fun. the western yeah. end uh, of yeah. the range. And ironically enough, our biggest white pine tree is is uh, state record is in, in Itasca State Park. Okay. They wouldn't let me cut that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're talking about you as a, uh, a producer of, of products from this, but you're also trying to replenish